Here's the question. Which of the following glands does the GnRH stimulate? The options are posterior pituitary gland and stimulates secretion of prolactin and oxytocin, anterior pituitary gland and stimulates the secretion of LH and oxytocin, anterior pituitary gland and stimulates the secretion of LH and FSH, posterior pituitary gland and stimulates the secretion of prolactin and relaxin. Now this question is about GnRH. GnRH is a short form for gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now in the hypothalamus two different types of hormones are produced. Okay, so there's the releasing hormones and there are, then there are inhibiting hormones. Releasing hormones will stimulate the pituitary, anterior pituitary specifically to release some hormones. Whereas the inhibitory hormones produced by the hypothalamus will inhibit the release of certain hormones from the anterior pituitary. Now GnRH is one type of releasing hormone as it is given in the name. It is gonadotropin releasing hormone which simply implies that it stimulates the release of gonadotropins from the anterior lobe of the pituitary. Okay, so GnRH is a releasing hormone that is secreted by the hypothalamus and it is responsible for the release of gonadotropins. There are two gonadotropins that are produced by the anterior pituitary gland that is FSH and LH. FSH is short for follicle stimulating hormone and LH is short for luteinizing hormone. Both of these are produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary. And the reason these two hormones are known as uh, gonadotropins is because they act on our gonads, that is the testes and the ovaries. Okay, So the hypothalamus produces GnRH. GnRH will stimulate the anterior lobe of the pituitary to produce FSH and LH. FSH will act on the testicles as well as ovaries and then uh, it will stimulate the production of the sex hormones and also stimulate um, uh, oogenesis, production of sperm and the egg. Okay, So that is the function of these um, gonadotropins that are produced by the anterior pituitary lobe. So the options, the other options that we had in this question are oxytocin, prolactin and relaxin. Oxytocin is a hormone that is released by the posterior lobe of the pituitary but it is produced by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus produces this hormone and will axonally transport that to the posterior lobe of the pituitary where it can be stored and secreted. Okay, So oxytocin is released by the posterior pituitary but it is synthesized by the hypothalamus and it is transported axonally to the neurohypophysis. Neurohypophysis is another name for the posterior pituitary. Okay, now prolactin. Prolactin is a hormone that is produced by the anterior pituitary. It is responsible for regulating the growth of mammary glands and formation of milk in them during pregnancy and post-pregnancy after childbirth. Okay, so relaxin, uh, its function is to relax the ligaments in our pelvis. So during childbirth, the pelvis has to widen. Only then the baby can be delivered, right? So this relaxin hormone, as the name indicates, will help in relaxing the ligaments in the pelvic region. And therefore, it softens and widens the cervix to ease childbirth. Okay, so that is the function of relaxin. So we were asked which of the following glands does the GnRH stimulate? Now I'm sure you know that the correct answer is option C. It will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland uh, to secrete FSH and LH which are the gonadotropins. Here's the question, which of the following is not a function of the luteinizing hormone? The options are ovulation of mature follicle, maintenance of corpus luteum, secretion of androgens from testis, production of sperm cells. So among these functions, we have to find out which is not a function of luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is in short known as LH and it is one of the gonadotropins that is produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary. There's a hormone known as gonadotropin releasing hormone, GnRH in short, that is produced by the hypothalamus. When this hormone is produced by the hypothalamus, it will stimulate the anterior lobe of the pituitary to produce the luteinizing hormone. Okay, so in males, the luteinizing hormone is also known as interstitial. cell stimulating hormone. Okay, so in males, LH is also known as ICSH. The reason is that within the testes, there are cells known as interstitial cells, also, know, also called as Leydig cells. 
So these are the cells that are involved in production of androgens such as testosterone. So when LH is produced in males, it will stimulate these cells to produce androgens such as testosterone. Okay, so therefore LH is also known as ICSH because it is the interstitial cells that will get stimulated to produce the androgens. Okay, so that is the function of LH in males. When we look at the function of LH in females, there are two very important functions performed by the luteinizing hormone. The first one is that it is involved in the rupturing of the mature follicle which we call the graphene follicle in the ovaries resulting in ovulation. So the egg gets released from the follicle because of the action of luteinizing hormone. Okay, So in females it is responsible for ovulation. That process is known as ovulation. You have a mature follicle called the graphene follicle. It will rupture and release the egg. So that process is what we call ovulation. Okay, so in females it is responsible for ovulation. Also, after the graphene follicle has ruptured and released the egg, the remnants of the graphene follicle that are present in the ovary, which is known as the corpus luteum, this will secrete a, a hormone known as progesterone and this corpus luteum is maintained by the luteinizing hormone. So in females it is involved in ovulation and it also maintains the uh, corpus luteum that secretes the progesterone. Okay, so these are the functions of LH in females. So among the options, there was a, an option that said production of sperm cells, right? So this is not something that is stimulated by LH. It is stimulated by another gonadotropin released by the anterior lobe of the pituitary, which is known as follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. Okay, so this hormone uh, will act on uh, the testes in males and it will stimulate spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is the process by which sperms will get formed in our testes. Okay, so uh, this is stimulated by FSH and not LH. In the question, we were asked to find out a function that is not performed by uh, LH. So the correct answer is option D, production of sperms, because that is uh, production of sperms is stimulated by FSH and not LH. Here's the question, hypersecretion of growth hormone, options are leads to gigantism, leads to dwarfism, leads to normal growth and option D, no change in the body. Now, what is growth hormone? Growth hormone is also known as somatotropin and it is one of the hormones that is produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary. So, uh, one of the functions or some of the functions of the growth hormone include controlling metabolism of the body and growth. Okay, so whenever growth hormone is released in normal quantities, it will lead to normal growth of an individual. But sometimes, uh, because of some conditions, there could be an excess release or secretion of the growth hormone in some individuals. So when there's an excess secretion, we call it hypersecretion. So when there's a hypersecretion of growth hormone, I told you that it is involved in controlling the growth and metabolism. And when there's too much of growth hormone, it will result in abnormal growth leading to gigantism. Now, one of the notable features of people that have gigantism is their height, okay? So, they are extremely tall compared to other normal individuals. That is just one of the uh, notable features. But there are various other symptoms as well, okay? So, that is gigantism. When there's a hypersecretion of growth hormone, it can cause gigantism. And when there is a hyposecretion, less than normal amount of secretion, that is called hypo. Hypo means less, hyper is excess, okay? So when there's a hyposecretion of the same hormone, that is growth hormone, it leads to uh, stunted growth, okay? So these people, again, you can, no uh, it is noticeable in terms of their height. They are short statured compared to other normal people. So that will result in dwarfism. In the question, we were asked about the consequence of hypersecretion of growth hormone. So it will lead to gigantism. So the correct answer to this question is option A. Here's the question, which of the following is mismatched? The options are growth hormone, growth of the body, FSH stimulates development of ovarian follicles, prolactin, milk ejection, oxytocin, uterine contraction. Okay, so these are the options and there's hormones and their functions given. There's one hormone that is not correctly matched with its function and that's what we are required to figure out, okay? So, among the given options, the growth hormone, which is also known as somatotropin, FSH, which is short for follicle stimulating hormone, and prolactin. These three hormones are produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Whereas oxytocin, it is produced by the hypothalamus, it is stored and secreted by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. So, here you can see the pituitary gland is um, anatomically divided into the anterior and the posterior lobes. 
So this is the anterior pituitary and this is the posterior pituitary. These are the neurons. So this is the hypothalamus region. The neurons that are present in the hypothalamus region by means of their axons will release the hormones uh, like oxytocin and vasopressin to the posterior pituitary gland where it can be stored and released. Okay. So yeah. Uh, Growth hormone, FSH and prolactin, these are produced and released by the anterior pituitary. Oxytocin is produced by the uh, hypothalamus but released by the posterior pituitary. Now, let's look at the functions of these different hormones. The growth hormone, it is involved in promoting or maintaining the growth of the body and the metabolism of the body. FSH is short for follicle stimulating hormone. So, it's already given in the name, right? So, it stimulates the development of follicles where? In the ovaries. Okay, so it stimulates the development of ovarian follicles. Prolactin, lacto has something to do with milk, right? So prolactin is a hormone that is produced by the anterior pituitary that is responsible for synthesis of milk in the breast. So it stimulates breast development and synthesis of milk in the breast during and post pregnancy. So oxytocin is a hormone, like I told you, that is produced by the hypothalamus and released by the posterior pituitary. This uh, stimulates the contraction of the uterine muscles. In the wall of the uterus, there is a muscle layer, smooth muscle layer. So oxytocin will stimulate the contraction of smooth muscles. When there's contraction of the uterus, it will result in childbirth, which is also known as parturition or delivery. Okay. So apart from that, another function that oxytocin performs is that it stimulates the ejection of milk from the breast. Production of milk is a function of prolactin, whereas ejection of the milk that is produced in the breast is a function of oxytocin. Now let's look at the options. Growth hormone uh, responsible for growth in the body. FSH stimulates development of ovarian follicles. That also is correct. Prolactin milk ejection. This is incorrect. And we were to... Uh, find out which one is mismatched. The correct answer to this question is option C. Prolactin is not involved in milk ejection. That is a function of oxytocin. Prolactin is involved in stimulating the development of breast and the formation of milk in the breast during and after pregnancy. Okay. So oxytocin uh, involved in uterine contraction. This also is correct. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is option C. Here's the question. Which of the following structures connects hypothalamus to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. The options are dendrites of neurohypophysis, axons of neurohypophysis, bands of white fibers from the cerebellar region, hypophysial portal system. So we have to find out what is that structure that is connecting the hypothalamus to the adenohypophysis, which is the anterior lobe of the pituitary. Okay, so the pituitary gland, as we know, is anatomically divided into two lobes. You have the anterior lobe of the pituitary here, and then there's the posterior lobe of the pituitary. The anterior lobe of the pituitary, also known as adenohypophysis, which is the subject of this question, is connected to the hypothalamus by a network of blood vessels. Okay, so within the stalk of the pituitary, so here you can see the stalk of the pituitary, which is known as the infundibulum. Within this stalk, you can see how there's a network of blood vessels here. Okay, so this network of blood vessels uh, or blood capillaries connects the hypothalamus to the anterior lobe of the pituitary and this network of blood vessels is known as the hypophysial portal system. Okay, so um, the function is basically regulation of a pituitary function by the hypothalamic hormones. Hypothalamus produces two different types of hormones. There are releasing hormones and there are inhibiting hormones. The releasing hormones will act on the anterior lobe of the pituitary and stimulates the release of the pituitary hormones. Whereas the inhibiting hormones that is produced by the hypothalamus, it will act on the anterior pituitary again, but they will inhibit the secretion of uh, pituitary hormones by the anterior lobe. Okay, so um, as you can see the difference between uh, the control of hypothalamus on the pituitary gland, the two lobes, is that the... Um, there is a blood vessel connection between the anterior lobe of the pituitary and the hypothalamus, whereas the posterior pituitary is under direct neural regulation. You can see how there are cell bodies uh, of neurons in the hypothalamus and their axons run down till the posterior pituitary. So, posterior pituitary is under direct uh, neural regulation. So, uh, let me tell you about the hypophysial system. It is very important because it allows hypothalamic hormones to be that are regulatory in function to be transported to the anterior lobe of the pituitary thereby providing 
mechanism for regulation of the pituitary function. So based on what hormones are released by the hypothalamus, whether it's releasing or inhibiting hormones, the functioning of the pituitary gland can be regulated by the hypothalamus. Okay, And uh, uh, it regulates the functioning of the anterior lobe of the pituitary by this hypophysial portal system. Okay, I hope you've understood. So we were asked what is the name of the structure that connects the hypothalamus to the anterior lobe of the pituitary which is known as the adenohypophysis. So the correct answer to this question is option D, hypophysial portal system.